Welcome back. Rising from the recent security alert by the US and UK embassies about a plot to attack the nation's capital during the Yuletide period, the FCT police commissioner is asking for cooperation of residents to address uh, security challenges in the capital city. Take a listen to this. Recently, the United States Embassy and the British High Commission issued a security alert warning about a plot by some terrorist groups to attack some places in Abuja, the nation's capital. That alert prompted a meeting between the police in charge of the Federal Capital Territory and residents. The idea is to gather the support of the public to address the security challenges in the city. The threat to attack the city is real. However, we want to assure members of the public that we are working hard in collaboration with other sister security agencies to ensure that we all enjoy a peaceful Yuletide. As I said earlier on, a lot needs to be done in order for a safer FCT. As such, I hereby call on members of the public to come and work with the Nigeria police in order to usher in an atmosphere of peace and tranquility as we go into the new year 2018. This you can do by providing vital information that could lead to the arrest of criminals or the prevention of crime. In view of this, house owners are hereby advised to warn their security men to always keep the gate locked, not to allow anybody access until they are sure or even double sure of who is coming in, especially in the evenings. Members of the public should also be careful of who they employ as house helps, such as security men, cooks, gardeners, etc. In many incidences of robberies, there seems to be connivance of house helps, especially on how these hoodlums gain access into the premises. For all of us, that is the police and members of the public, to come together and address these security challenges so that we can make inputs that will ensure a hit free Yuletide. The meeting goes into a closed door session after the Commissioner's remarks. However, one of the community leaders stresses the need for the police to protect their sources of information if they must enjoy the support of the public. To find some of them that, you know, it's like when they see you as a big man or there's something they felt they can benefit from you, either monetary or material. And they know quite well that you are involved or they don't know, somebody came to inform them that, look, this man, this is his uh, is, is, is life, his business, is criminal in nature. But because of the relationship that this man has with some police officers, it's either they ignore that information, or if they see that this information is coming from somebody who uh, can go to any length to still expose that person, then they, they expose the, 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 the informant, and that could, one, lead to the death or attack. And when you see somebody being attacked as a result of giving information, then the one you have that is even fighter, that can help the police people, you will not give it because you don't want anybody to attack. You don't want to uh, lose your life because you want to give information to police. So I think it's very important that the, the life, the property of the EDC informants are protected. If there's a confusion and if there's a clear understanding between the public and the police that whenever I give the information, I am secured and the information will be worked on. Because there's another thing for you to give information and there's another thing for the police to work on that information. Because if you don't work on that information, then you won't achieve anything. The problem will still persist. Security, they say, is everybody's business. Just as there is a consensus among security experts that securing a city becomes a lot easier when trust exists between security agencies and the public, who in most cases have first-hand intelligence that can help to curb a crime.